And so the discussion over gun control continues, Chuck. I understand you have more on the effort going on there to uh, really come to the aid of those grieving families by the religious community. Well, I, I do. And when you talk about the gun control issue, uh, Melissa put, really put her finger on the problem there. I mean, mm -hmm. this is a circumstance that is very, very difficult to head off. How do you, how do you head off somebody who has um, thoughts that we may not know about or who is, is contemplating something and has access to perfectly legal guns? That's a very difficult problem society's going to have to wrestle with right now. And I don't have any, any brilliant answers off the top of my head. One of the more poignant scenes. Uh, today. Certainly one of the more tragic scenes was what happened this morning at the Sandy Hook Volunteer Fire Department up the hill here, not far from the school, where the parents assembled when they heard that there was gunfire at the school and where they learned as one by one they were reunited with children. There were 20 families left that had no re were not be able to re reunited with their children, um, had to face that terrible truth that their children had been killed. At that moment, it was very important that there were clergy in the room. There was a Monsignor from the, the local Catholic Church, the St. Rose of Lima Catholic Church, who was in the room at the time when the horrible news was delivered, that there would be no more children arriving. And he described that moment to NBC News. I can't remember a time in which a gunman walked into a class full of kindergartners and opened fire. No, I don't think so. I, I think the, uh, you know, if you look at the Virginia Tech massacre, uh, that was a college campus. Mm -hmm. This this was a kindergarten class, and, and yeah. all of these are horrible. And, and sadly, we have many frames of reference for these. They're, this is happening far too often. And in fact, uh, Mark Santina covered in Colorado, you covered the, uh, the Aurora shooting, uh, where uh, a gunman walked into a, the midnight showing of Dark Night in a movie theater and opened fire on the audience there out of the clear blue and killed 13 people. This, when you first heard about this, it must have taken you right back to Aurora. It did, Chuck, because both places, a movie theater and elementary school, these are places we're supposed to go to be safe. I know, um, Sheba, on the, on the 5 o'clock program today, uh, you and David were talking about 9-11, how the shock, this was sort of similar to 9-11. I was thinking about that and thinking about sort of a, a tenuous similarity, and that is that on 9-11, you had, you had men who had, had planned something quite evil. And they were able to get onto airplanes and look into the faces of women and children and men who they knew they were going to kill and ride with them, be with them for an hour or more, knowing they were going to take their lives. It was an, uh, the, the essence of evil on 9-11. This, in a sense, has an echo of that, doesn't it? You have a young man who, for whatever reasons, whatever demons are circulating in his mind, hatched a plot and began, according to police reports, began by killing his own mother and then taking her car to an elementary school, going into her classroom, a kindergarten class, and looking into the faces of those children and methodically killing each one of them. There, if, there is, if there is the essence of evil, and not just plain madness, we saw it on 9-11, and we certainly saw it here in this little town tonight. My daughter's eight years old, and I have been crying yeah. all day long. Yeah, I'll bet you have. You know? You know? My children are grown now, but boy, I sure can remember when they were this age mm -hmm. and how, how, how tender and vulnerable and innocent they were. And uh, can't imagine what the families are going through right now. I can't imagine anybody is sleeping in this town.